from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is Frances Colton from Atticoken, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband Richard, deceased children, Michelle, Vernon, Vaughn, and Susan, and grandson Jeffrey. May God grant them eternal peace and happiness. The second is an anonymous donor from Mississauga, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received. The third are Paul and Margaret O'Connor from Scarborough, Ontario, in thanksgiving for the many blessings received during their 72 years of marriage. Improved health for Paul, for the living deceased members of the O'Connor and, Don Don and Donahue families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate worthily now the mystery of our faith, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels, to say nothing of ordinary matters? If you have ordinary cases, then, do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the Church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one believer and another, but a believer goes to court against a believer, and before unbelievers at that? In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud and believers at that. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, the coast of Tyre, and Sidon. And they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel, St. Luke describes for us the beginnings of our Lord's uh, earthly ministry, here recounting for us not only the call of the Twelve Apostles, but uh, he goes on to develop a portrait of a very merciful Jesus who extends God's healing, his power to the sick from among the crowds who have gathered to hear him preach, but also to seek his healing graces. I think that a number of things emerge for our reflection. First of all, we're led to focus our attention on Luke's description of Jesus as being at prayer and its implications also for us. I've said on other occasions, Luke is rather generous in relating for us some nine episodes in which he describes Jesus as being at prayer. He also relates two parables about prayer that are not found in the other Gospels. Luke, the other evangelists, together paint a clear and consistent portrait of Jesus as being in the habit of prayer. Virtually every key moment in his life and ministry, we find Jesus at prayer. His public ministry begins at prayer, as Luke shows us in his account of the baptism of our Lord. We just heard in today's gospel, Jesus spends the night in prayer before choosing the Twelve. Throughout his ministry, he's found at prayer for long intervals, even as the crowds gather around him and make demands upon him. And Jesus not only prays before and during key moments of his ministry, but after as well, as Matthew and Mark describe in their accounts of the miracles of the miracle of the loaves. Interesting to note that Luke describes our Lord as being at prayer prior to teaching the disciples how to pray in chapter 11 of his gospel. Gospel accounts of the transfiguration, our Lord's miracles, the Last Supper, the Garden of Gethsemane, the crucifixion, all underscore for us the great importance of prayer as we see the prayer of our Lord himself. Commentators observe that Luke's gospel in particular develops prayer, the prayer of Jesus as a kind of special theme, even of course all the gospels do show us clearly how it is that our Lord's entire earthly mission is animated by the power of prayer. In prayer, Jesus experiences a relationship with God, whom he calls Father. In prayer, Jesus discerns the purposes of God the Father. In prayer, Jesus expresses his intention to follow the will of the Father. He receives strength while being at prayer. Secondly, it follows then, here Pope John Paul II observes that Jesus is then our model for the life of prayer. He is our model for the life of prayer. We learn the art of prayer from Jesus, like the very first disciples who ask our Lord, Lord, teach us to pray. Prayer, John Paul writes, develops that conversation with Christ which makes us his intimate friends. And we see this clearly in the great example of the saints of the church. How often should we pray? Jesus, in his teachings, invites us to pray at all times. We need to be persistent in prayer, not only asking for what we need, not only praying for others, but like our Lord himself, our entire life should be animated by the power of prayer and its life-giving graces. The Gospels then invite us to be a people of prayer, always in imitation of Christ himself. The Gospels invite us to be in the habit of regular prayer, praying at all times like the Lord himself especially, again, at these key moments and transitions of life. Likewise, St. Paul echoes all of this, reminding us of the, important of the importance of persevering in prayer. Pray always, he writes in his letters. In chapter 9 of the Gospel of Luke, our Lord underscores the importance of persistence in prayer when he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. 
For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus himself shows us again by his example that prayer needs to be at the very center of our life. We need to be constantly at prayer in this cloud of prayer. Jesus shows us ultimately prayer is conversation with God. There's an idea expressed very clearly and succinctly in the motto of the coat of arms of Cardinal St. John Henry Newman, core at core loquitur, heart speaks to heart. The Catechism then defines prayer as the raising of one's mind and one's heart to God, or the requesting of good things for God. And adding that the life of prayer is the habit of being in the presence of the thrice holy God and in communion with him. Here, St. Therese of Lisieux speaks of prayer as a surge of the heart, a simple look toward heaven, a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy. Thirdly, Jesus and the great saints show us that prayer is God's gift, God's covenant, a communion that we enter into at the moment of baptism. At the same time, it's important to note that there are different kinds of prayer. Again, the Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks of the types of prayer, namely prayer of blessing, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, and praise. Prayer, persistent prayer, whether the rosary, novenas, prayer with scripture, above all regular attendance at mass, Eucharistic adoration, all of these are so important, I think, especially in the challenging times in which we live. I've quoted on other occasions an early Christian writer, Tertullian, who reminds us of the great power of prayer, and he writes as follows. Prayer gives strength to the weak. Prayer heals the sick. It opens the prison cells to free the innocent from their chains. Prayer cleanses us from sin, drives away temptations, stamps out persecutions, comforts the faint-hearted. Prayer gives new strength to the courageous, brings travelers safely home, calms the waves, confounds the robbers, feeds the poor, overrules the rich, lifts up the fallen, supports those who are failing, and sustains those who stand firm. These renewing graces of prayer are underscored rather more succinctly by St. Maximilian Kolbe observes that prayer makes the world anew very powerful and relevant message again in our, word, in our world today, very much in need of spiritual renewal. Finally, while the example of Jesus inspires us to pray at all times and not to lose heart, at the same time, we shouldn't expect God that will, it will necessarily give us whatever we ask for, much less uh, whenever we ask for it. And so what can we say? Lord, here is my situation. I'm asking this for myself for, or for a loved one. But in the end, thy will be done. That's what Jesus teaches us. Jesus, again, our model for the life of prayer. Study the lives of the saints. Again, the writings of St. John of the Cross, the dark night of the soul, the rules for the discernment of spirits, St. Ignatius of Loyola, especially his teachings concerning sp spiritual desolation. In prayer, persistent prayer. Yes, we address God. We make known our needs. But then we pause and we listen precisely to discern what God is asking of us in the concrete circumstances of our life. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, let us pray for the grace of a renewed spiritual life. We pray for the grace to be persistent in our prayers and our petitions to God, not only for ourselves, but for others, especially those most in need in the present time. Here, a fourth century monk and great mystic writes that, when people dedicate themselves to unceasing prayer, they possess a beautiful treasure which becomes one's greatest possession. He continues, let us pray that God give us the wings of a dove that is the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we may fly upward toward God and take our rest in him. Brothers and sisters, let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking him to hear and to answer the prayers that we make in Jesus' name. We pray for the universal church, for the unity among Christians, for peace among nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, for those who have died, for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the daily TV Mass community who are dedicated to the care of the sick, may they receive the grace to continue their ministry of compassion and caring with hope and joy. We pray to the Lord. For all those intentions that we remember now in the silence of our own hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord 
Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us, to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your own spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us extend to those around us a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord Jesus Christ, bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.